A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing all, at all during those times, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you, I will give their glory and all this authority for it has been given over to me and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of Christ.
I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Lenten practices of fasting and abstinence. Historically, for the longest time, Christians would prepare for Easter by doing certain practices that would help them open up to receive the gift of God at Easter. They would do things such as fasting from food, either for short periods of time or even for a whole day, or maybe even multiple days. Or some would even perhaps abstain from eating meat, say on Fridays, or abstain from maybe sweets or coffee or things like that. For many, it's a curiosity as to why we do these things. And sometimes even for Christians, sometimes Christians do them, it's almost as if they're doing a diet or trying to care for themselves and their bodies. But there's a real purpose to fasting and abstaining from different things. Let me explain. Our spiritual life, our souls, often get cluttered with a lot of things. You probably feel this in your own life. Your, your days get busy, life gets busy, and you just get overwhelmed and you get exhausted. I felt this the other day. I, there were so many things going on in life that I, it just I was getting overwhelmed and I started finding myself getting grouchy and grumpy. And I, I ran into a person at the grocery store and, and she was doing something and she was taking her time, she was taking forever. And I just found myself getting irritated by it and just grouchy about it. As I left the store, I, I wondered why? Why did I get so irritated over something so silly? Why? I think the reason why is because my soul, my spirit, hadn't had a chance to reconnect with God. Instead, all these other things are filling my spirit, my mind, my heart, so that I couldn't even possibly love the person in front of me. This is why fasting and abstinence become such wonderful practices. When we fast, we, we intentionally choose to maybe deny ourselves something so as to become open to something else. Now, fasting doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, fasting from food, although that's a classic way. One can fast from many other things. Maybe fast from coffee through Lent. Maybe fast from, I don't know, even something like being intentional that I'm not going to complain. I'm going to fast from complaining or abstain from complaining, however you want to call it. Because when we do that, we become suddenly much more keenly aware of the present moment. We start to become more attentive and much more attuned with the ways of God. These practices of fasting and abstinence can help clean out our soul and open our hearts to love, to love God, to love each other. Now again, fasting and abstaining may not necessarily have anything to do with food. For some of you, it may. Some of you may say, you know what, on Fridays, I'm not going to eat until lunchtime. Or maybe every day I'm not going to eat until lunchtime. Or some of you may say, you know, I'm going to abstain from drinking alcohol, having desserts. Don't do it so much because of the physical benefit. Do it as a way to help you become more attuned and aware. Leave space open. <laughs> That's a funny thing, by the way, as a side point. Oftentimes when people fast and abstain, what they unconsciously do is they fill that emptiness with something else. That's not the point here. The point here is to open up space for God and for each other. To become more aware 
more attentive of each other and less consumed with our own wants and desires. No, let me say this. Not everybody is called to fast or abstain, and for some that may not be very healthy or safe. But for many of us, these can be very, very good practices to help us become aware, more attentive to others. They're also good practices as well for us to fight temptations, you know, and I would encourage you when you think of abstaining or fasting to maybe choose something that will help you, for example, to become more caring, more loving. You know, maybe to say with some intentionality that, you know, rather than be so concerned about getting everything done in a day, I'm going to be gentle and take the day slowly. And if somebody holds me up, that's okay. Maybe there was a reason that God wanted me to be held up in that moment. Maybe I need to be more attentive to the person in front of me in need. Or maybe I needed to be more attentive to the, the man who is begging for food along the way. But I encourage you, on some level, think of something that you can do during this Lenten season. Maybe some, something that you can abstain from, something, some form of fast. Maybe a fast from swearing, <laughs> a fast from drinking, a fast from maybe eating too much. I don't know whatever it is. But when you do, my encouragement is this. Don't try to fill it with something else. Leave open that space. Leave open the space for God to love you and for you to love God and each other. Amen.